I'm Jasmine Victoria Hupp, and I'm one of the co-founders of Women Grow. And <laughs> last year, I stood on this stage as also your CEO, and I want to tell you a little bit about what happened. You see, I'm actually here today because I am an external validation junkie. Do you know what I mean? Can you relate? You see, I was born naturally happy and free as a child, but then I showed up in school and they said, well, you're not actually happy, and you're definitely not going to be free unless you uh, get the right grades, find the right person to marry, get the six-figure job in Manhattan, go on to found several companies, and then when you're old and you can no longer enjoy your life, then you will be happy, and then you will be free. <laughs> and I said, well, the only way that I could possibly rebel against my hippie parents is to follow this advice, and I went full bore. I was in the middle of working with Women 2.0, where we were getting more women to fund technology venture-backed startups, when I realized that the game was rigged, that we had been working in a system with institutionalized biases, and we were asking women to work in a way that wasn't working for them, and it wasn't working for the world. And in that summer of 2014, Jane West found me, and through uh, the amazing courage of the founding members of Women Grow, in August of 2014, we began. And wow, by August of 2015, Newsweek already sang from its cover, legal marijuana could be the first billion dollar industry not dominated by men. I mean, talk about external validation. Literally, it came in on magazine covers to me. But instead of taking that energy and that pressure, and spreading it to my team and spreading it out to my community, I took it upon myself. I had mistakenly thought that the reason we were here in this place had a lot more to do with me than it had to do with all of you. So I took that upon myself, and I started being really hard on myself. I stopped taking care of myself. I was 40 pounds heavier on this stage last year. I was so hard on others, it actually gave me more permission to be hard. Sorry, I was so hard on myself that I thought it gave me permission to be harder on others. And wow, was that a race to the bottom. And so my team had the courage to ask me to find another solution. And we were so lucky to hire Leah Heiss to join you as CEO today. So on July 1st, I literally left the country. I took the last six months off. Or I should say, I took the last six months in. Not because I believed I deserved it. I thought that I was a failure. You see, I had deadlines, I had a vision, and it didn't occur to me that no one knew what that vision or deadline was except for me, and I had been very disappointed that I had not hit it, and yet everyone else was pretty happy to even have a place for women in cannabis to gather. So, I thought I'd been a failure, but it turns out that I'd learned a lot more than I thought. I just needed a little time to digest it, a little time to understand what all these amazing women in this industry had taught me. So these are the three things that changed my life, they change how I operate my businesses now, and they change how I live every day. The first thing I had to do was to learn to put myself first. This is not easy. We were told that that's self-indulgent, that it's selfish, that as women, our job was to put ourselves second, third, last. But it's not working, right? One in four women right now will be prescribed antidepressants in her lifetime. One in eight will battle breast cancer. So I know from this position of giving everything away until we have nothing left to give just doesn't work. And we need to stop it. Because as women, we are meant to serve from our abundance. We are meant to fill ourselves up with so much energy and so much light that we radiate it to others. So stop putting yourself last and start putting yourself first in every single decision. Because you cannot lead people to a place that you have not been before. And in order for me to take us higher, I had to go higher myself. 
Next. I had to learn to trust my feelings. I was not told to trust my feelings as a young girl. I was told that I was hysterical by the culture around me. I inherited a business environment in my 20s that told me the right way to do business was to exploit your employees, exploit your customers, and exploit the earth. And that felt wrong. And so I had to stuff those feelings away so I could operate in a culture that told us to do things that feel wrong. Well, we're here to challenge that culture. And in fact, you are in this room today because you have an epically intelligent guidance system in front of, inside of you. And that epically intelligent system has told you that regardless of what Reagan said, regardless of what the federal government says, you know that cannabis is a safe and effective treatment for yourself and your community. So continue to follow those feelings. Continue to challenge the things that feel wrong. Because that's how we're going to get to a place where women don't have to hide their feelings. We don't have to stuff down. We can feel everything, and it's going to feel really good. <laughs> and then last, it sounds simple. It sounds like I'm talking to you about Tinkerbell, honestly. But the only difference between where I was six months ago and where I am today is that I believe in myself now and I have a community of women who believe in me. In this room, we have all the ingredients of a national cannabis industry. In fact, in this room, I would venture to say that we have all the ingredients to a $100 billion sector after international legalization. And the only difference between where we stand today and that future is your ability to believe in yourself and believe in each other. So I have a favor to ask for you today. Because it's, it's, it's hard to see the forest for the trees when you're in the middle of the mucky muck. It's hard to see your potential. It's hard to feel like a success when things are going up, 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 down, up, down, and then down. But the secret is, often the sweetest success is going to come right after you are at the bottom of the bottom. So I have a favor to ask you at lunch today. I'd like you to find a woman in this room and tell her something that shows her potential, that shows her passion, that shows that you see her radiance. She's not always going to see it for herself. Tell her something specific and tell her that you believe in her. Would you do that for me at lunch today? Can we do that? Can we do that? I'm also curious. Who's often like the one that's going to run out to lunch alone? Who's the lunch alone ladies? Can we, could someone grab the lunch alone ladies? Raise your hand. Grab the lunch alone ladies. They need to be told that someone believes in them. Absolutely. And if we can do this for this week, for this year, for this decade, I think we can create something very special here, something that the external validation train didn't tell me was possible. So I'll see you right back here. The show's going to start very promptly. We have more stories to share. I'm Jasmine Victoria Hupp, and I believe in you. <laughs>